So what I've got here on the bench for us to take a look at today is a HP Procurve uh, panel antenna. It's designed to work with uh, their line of uh, routers, uh, network switches, repeaters, etc. And uh, it's a dual band panel antenna. It works at 6.9 uh, dBi of gain in the 2.4 gigahertz band, all the way up to 7.7 .7 dB of gain in the uh, 5 gigahertz band. Now, this is uh, mostly designed for uh, Wi Fi, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi Fi, but in the uh, 5 gigahertz band, it's uh, really, really wide and uh, works up to uh, 5.8 gigahertz. In fact, almost uh, hitting the uh, 6 gigahertz band. So it would be pretty good for uh, FPV as well. I mean, it's almost, uh, its specs are virtually identical to the uh, Alpha. Uh, panel antenna that we took a look at uh, some time ago now which I was uh, you know really uh, surprised at that antenna and uh, impressed and I really do think that uh, Alpha should start uh, labeling that antenna as a tri-band not a uh, dual band but uh, let's hook this up to the uh, network analyzer then and uh, we'll take a look at the output on there and uh, just see how good it is uh, with the uh, frequency responses so here's the setup then as you've seen many times before so let's take a look at the interesting bit over on the network analyzer so here it is on the uh, network analyzer then and you may have noticed that in the last few videos i've started filming this in the dark unfortunately my uh, network analyzer this particular line of analyzer from hp did suffer from uh, dimming screens you can get an lcd upgrade for this and uh, i think it's something that i'm going to look at uh, next year but they are a little bit pricey but uh, anyway back to the video uh, I've decided to split this up because the uh, bandwidth of this antenna is so large uh, we're looking at 2.4 uh, gigahertz at the minute for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and you can see I've got the cursor there bang on uh, 2.45 gigahertz we've got this really nice wide band of operation here a really nice looking uh, frequency response for an antenna that uh, would be used for 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi so that is really really nice so let's have a look further up at uh, 5 gigahertz and apparently the uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, frequencies as well see if it's as nice as this so here we are then with the uh, 5 gigahertz spectrum i'm scanning from uh, 4.8 gigahertz to uh, 6.2 gigahertz and we've got this lovely dip here um, around the uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi it's uh, a little bit uh, further on than I would like most 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi although you can adjust the channels um, operates right at the beginning of the 5 gigahertz range but uh, this one is pretty wide I mean the only thing I can think of is that this is designed to work with some uh, specific uh, you know HP hardware like some kind of router or repeater something like that access point that uh, HP do and maybe they uh, use the channel further up in the uh, 5 gigahertz range but that looks really really nice and of course we've got this other secondary dip over here at 5.8 gigahertz so you know you could use it for uh, FPV or uh, for uh, security uh, cameras something like that um, you know but I really I would try to uh, aim for something built more for that particular frequency but uh, I mean if you did have a few of these and you wanted to use them it would work uh, okay but uh, probably nowhere near as good as a uh, antenna just designed for that uh, one specific uh, frequency but uh, indeed it does have uh, the two dips in that 5 uh, gigahertz band also reminds me quite a lot of the uh, alpha um, panel antenna that we uh, took a look at and I ended up calling that a tri-band antenna because it works so well in uh, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz that it uh, claimed to work at but it also worked really well further up in uh, the 5.8 gigahertz range as well so uh, you know this one is looking about the same you know a really nice antenna and it will work at uh, these three frequencies 
now a little bit more interesting than I thought it would be uh, you can see here we've got uh, two elements and the top element looks to be a parasitic element and you could probably see uh, through the top one there we've got uh, elements here and here on the underside and on the back they look a little bit uh, different as well so one of those uh, two pairs will be for 2.4 gigahertz and the other ones will be for the uh, 5 gigahertz so let's remove this so we can take a closer look but I wasn't expecting to find a uh, parasitic element on the top there so I've got both of the uh, elements here and I uh, it is the following day I decided to make a uh, PDF for you if you want to download it and uh, have a go at making this one yourself it is pretty interesting um, originally I did think uh, this is the ground element here this is the main driven element I did think there was a size difference when I was looking through the small gap at first but there isn't they're both uh, equal sizes um, the back reflector itself that's uh, not grounded so it's sitting in uh, free space uh, would work a lot better if it was grounded but obviously uh, they were unable to ground it it uh, looks like it would have messed things up a little bit so it's uh, not grounded but it is pretty thick stuff but uh, let's take a look at this PDF because I've color coded it as well so you can see how it fits together a lot easier now with the PDF I've not put any measurements on this it uh, would have taken up too much room but uh, I have put a scale on here so if you print it off you want this square to be 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters and uh, here I put the artwork if you want to uh, have a go etching this for yourself I think I will make a uh, few of these over the winter there's some experiments I want to do with them but uh, here at the bottom I've color coded it so you can see how uh, this antenna fits together we've got uh, the first element here which is the uh, ground element and then we've got the main driven element here and they fit over the top of each other like uh, this here then we've got the uh, parasitic elements the two parasitic elements here and they fit over the elements like so now We've seen uh, things like this in the past with these uh, parasitic elements on some panel antennas previously. But uh, if I was designing this, I think the first thing I would have done would be to put four smaller parasitic elements on uh, here, here and uh, here. I uh, would not have uh, first uh, thought about putting them uh, in these two positions here. I would have thought that uh, this antenna would have radiated more from these uh, points here the four edges of uh, these elements but obviously um, they've put them here I would have thought an antenna like this would have gone through a lot of testing anyway but I think it might be interesting uh, to etch this off and uh, try it with the uh, elements the parasitic elements in the four corners and see what difference that makes um, I don't think the parasitic elements would make a great deal of difference to the overall frequency of this antenna uh, that's not what these parasitic elements tend to do uh, the main purpose is to uh, make the beam width narrower and uh, by that increase the gain so the make uh, you know the the beam width narrower a little bit like a uh, lens on a torch something like that for instance it just focuses the beam a little bit more I mean the uh, dbm of this antenna isn't uh, you know overly big uh, 6.9 dbi of gain at 2.4 gigahertz and 7.7 .7 dbi at the uh, 5 gigahertz frequencies but uh, you know it is a small footprint antenna though but uh, it's not bad gain for the size of the elements in this antenna but uh, you know i'd really like to play around with these parasitic elements just to see what they would do and just a couple of other things to note the distance from the uh, back reflector to the uh, driven element of this antenna is uh, 16 millimeters and they're using these little nylon spacers here which are pretty standard actually I've got some black ones here that I can replace these with because I had to cut them off but uh, and also the uh, parasitic elements are spaced out at uh, around two millimeters and again this little nylon spacer here is pretty uh, standard as well if you 
got yourself a, a kit like this off of eBay, you'd have plenty of uh, different uh, sizes to uh, rebuild this antenna if you were to uh, etch it out and make it for yourself. So a nice uh, little uh, dual band antenna then from uh, HP and uh, we haven't taken a look at their antennas uh, before, not really, unless uh, there might be an odd one from a few years ago. But uh, yeah, a nice little uh, dual band antenna there. It's going to work uh, really well for you in the 5 gigahertz band and uh, the 2.4 gigahertz. I am going to uh, put this antenna back together again and uh, build it back up and I'll uh, give it away to uh, one of my Patreons. If you want to help support this channel, then please feel free to uh, pop on over there. But uh, yeah, the uh, download for the PDF will be in the description. And again, you know, just looking at these different designs really helps uh, when it comes to uh, designing your own antennas, just to see what the uh, professional people do with something like this. And it's a pretty, uh, usable antenna with uh, that wide um, area of operation the uh, wide bandwidth that this has pretty simple antenna too uh, you shouldn't have any problems etching this on some uh, you know single-sided PCB board and uh, making something uh, similar yourself so if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up comments or questions drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one